Today in the news, we got a super benchmark, a big forehead, and an interconnect. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with the green team. With the super lineup almost completely out, we saw quite the performance increase with the 2060 and 2070 super. Both cards received a nice bump of 256 CUDA cores, with the 2060 super also getting an extra 2 gigabytes of memory. That resulted in something around a 15% increase in performance for both cards. Now, if we compare that to the 2080 with its super variant, it only gets an increase of 128 CUDA cores. It did, however, also get a bump in memory speeds, so how does that translate into performance? Well, a leaked Final Fantasy XV benchmark shows that the 2080 Super gets a performance boost of only 7.5% over a regular 2080. That's a long way from the 15% improvement which the 2070 Super actually achieves over the regular 2070. I know that I've said multiple times in the past that the Final Fantasy XV benchmark isn't something that we should look at, but that is only when we are comparing Nvidia to AMD. In this case, it's a perfect tool to compare both cards. This brings up a point about value because some will say that sure, it's only 7.5% faster, but it's free performance since you're paying the same price as the 2080. I would argue otherwise though. This super bracket is going to push back the release of the next gen GPUs by quite a bit. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see another Nvidia generation until Q3 next year. So you're getting 7.5% more for the same price, but I don't think that the value is completely there. If it was me, I would snag a 2080 once those go on sale, like the the 2070 did. Or I'd just go for a Navi GPU if bang for the buck was my priority. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. In smartphone news, it looks like Google is going to maintain the trend of a large forehead for their Pixel 4. Not only that, but we finally get rid of the horrible notch on the XL version. A leak of the front glass for both the Pixel 4 and XL show a large top bezel with quite a lot of peeping holes through it. Some speculate that one of those holes is there for a motion sensing technology called Project Soli. Soli was shown off on a prototype LG smartwatch and it's basically a small radar that allows fine movement detection. LG tried their hand at something similar with their gesture system called Hand Air, but it's been pretty unreliable, so maybe Google's project solely will make it into the next iteration. Moving on, it looks like another company is going to make a consumer-friendly move in the motherboard game. A few days ago, we saw a chart full of Asus motherboards with compatibility for PCIe Gen 4. Well, now we have Biostar, who is also enabling it for some of their B450 and X470 boards. All you have to do is download the new BIOSes and you're good to go. That being said, like any other BIOS update, be careful before you install it. Since the newer BIOS are pretty hefty because of Ryzen 3000, you might lose out on some features, however necessary they are. So make sure you have a backup. Then we have Microsoft with another rebrand. After Office getting a visual rebrand and Internet Explorer getting, well, replaced by Edge, we now have Microsoft changing Windows Defender to Microsoft Defender. It's not a big change, but it's an understandable one. Windows Defender has expanded to Android, iOS, macOS, and Linux over the years, and since it's no longer a Windows exclusive, the name change makes sense. Was it necessary? I don't think so, but they're doing it anyway, so. Next up, back in March, Intel debuted its new interconnect called CXL or Compute Express Link. CXL is basically a interconnect like PCI Express, and it also works in the same hardware as PCI Express, but it's more focused on data centers and cloud computing use. I went into more details in another video, so if you want to check it out, you can click right here. So CXL was created by Intel and is open source. A lot of companies have already become supporters and partners on it, like Google, Microsoft, Microsoft, Dell, Facebook, etc. Well, now an unlikely partner seemed to have jumped into the consortium, and that is AMD. Even though AMD already has its own interconnect, it hopes to help advance CXL and maybe integrate it into future products. What a good guy, or a good company. In gaming, it looks like Overwatch will be getting its new Hero 31 pretty soon. Mexico's Overwatch World Cup Twitter page posted some photos to show off how the new roll queue system would look like throughout the game's stats menu. In doing so, a new character called Sigma was leaked. 
memes incoming, that's for sure. We weren't sure if this was actually legit, but the official Play Overwatch Twitter then released a dev update where Jeff gets sucked into what looks like a gravity orb, and then a bunch of math related to gravity popped up on the screen. A day later, we got another teaser with what looks like Sigma's prison attire with the caption, what is that melody? We are due for a new hero in the game, and Sigma might make its appearance as early as this Tuesday in the PTR. Let me know if you're gonna try it out, because I will for sure. Anyways guys, lots of news today, but that is pretty much it. If you got any questions or comments, you know where to put them. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the channel, it would be greatly appreciated. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Sometimes, life throws you lemons straight in your face, and juice hits your eyes, and then it hurts. But not today, lemon, not today.